Uh, we have uh, Dr. Sandeep Naik, sir, who is uh, joined us, uh, um, just making you co-host. Uh, and I request uh, Dr. Charita to introduce Dr. Sandeep Naik and, and talk about him. Yeah, go ahead. Dr. Charita is a senior uh, clinical researcher of, of uh, data mine. Thank, welcome, Dr. Sandeep Naik, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Go ahead, Charita. Thank you, Dr. Geeta, for the opportunity. Uh, uh, it is my privilege to welcome uh, Dr. Sandeep Nayak, who is a leading surgical oncologist. He is the founder and chief of Surgical Oncology Max Clinic. He is, been, uh, he is the director of Sur uh, Surgical Oncology, Professor and HOD, and his expertise is in minimal access surgical oncology, and he he is the director at Fortis Cancer Institute. His major areas of interest include colorectal cancer, head and neck cancer, breast cancer, uh, urinary tract cancer, etc. After pursuing MBBS from Kasturba Medical College, Dr. Nayak did his post graduation in general surgery from Government Medical College, Calicut. He followed it up with a doctoral in surgical oncology from Chitranjan National Cancer Institute, Kolkata. Then he went on to acquire his fellowship in laparoscopic and robotic oncosurgery, oncosurgery Edinburgh, UK. Sorry, he is a member of various prestigious associations, including Royal College of Surgeons, Edinburgh, UK. Over the course of his career, Dr. Nayak has treated thousands of patients, not only from India, but all over the world. He has performed many innovative and award-winning surgeries like Riamine for oral cancer, and robotic assisted bilateral axillo insufflate thyroidectomy, shortly called as RABBIT. This is an alternative to open surgery for thyroid cancer. So it is our privilege to listen to you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much for agreeing to address us. Uh, and and I, again, I urge the audience to really make use of this half an hour that we're going to get with Dr. Naik, sir. And over to you. Thank you so much. We really look forward to your uh, talks. Thank you, Dr. Chaitra and uh, Charita, sorry, Charita and uh, Dr. Geeta. So it's my pleasure to be here. And uh, thanks uh, for organizing this session because to, as, uh, you know, can World Cancer Day, uh, we are looking at various aspects of uh, cancer and based on the theme, we are talking about it. And there are many things which are happening, but anything we do today is meant to, uh, you know, uh, to bridge that gap which exists in the cancer care around us, be it in India, be it in all over the world. So the whole theme is about bridging that gap and making overall uh, you know, uh, outcomes for the case, uh, cancer patients better. Now, I will be talking about two cancers, oral cancer and breast cancer. And first of all, when I, when I was asked, you know, what I would like to talk, I chose these two. And the reason was this. If you see this graph, you will see among men, the most common cancer is oral cancer. And among women, the most common cancer is breast cancer. So if you see this, you know, this is the reason why these two cancers become extremely important when it comes to preventive strategies and the outcomes are concerned. So, and also remember that cancer incidence is increasing over time. It's been constantly increasing. This is just 2004 to 2020. The graph is uphill. So when this change and uh, and you know at present you know we might say it is the, the second or third most uh, common cause of death among in the population uh, but very soon it is expected to be the top cause of death so can we change things can we make it better for our people is what is the concept which we are looking at now what is the uh, indian scenario we we'll look at the indian scenario for both breast cancer and oral cancer. And we'll see what would be the best solution that we have. Now for oral cancer, as you all must be knowing already that in a most, it's a woman, a most common cancer among Indian men. And it is tobacco related. More than 70% of oral cancers 
are related to tobacco any form of tobacco related to smoking or chewing tobacco any form of tobacco is associated with oral cancer so it is 70% which means if tobacco consumption stops 70% of oral cancers are will be eliminated so but also remember there are non this 30% is also very significant and it is associated not associated with tobacco so you, it's not that you know, we can ignore if tobacco goes so the other problem of oral cancer especially when it is delayed uh, in diagnosis is the disfigurement which it causes and the functional issues related to the treatment because it's functional issues means you know ability to eat normal food ability to uh, go out in the public in fact there are a so, lot of social issues because of the treatment itself because patients may have some flap reconstructions which will make them look different from others so these issues can become a problem for a given patient and the all these things can be avoided when the diagnosis happens early now looking at the age group which is most commonly affected as far as oral cancer is concerned in india as of now what we are seeing is a peak around the age of 50s 55 late 50s this is when oral cancer happens and of course you know there is again a peak at in the later half of their later part of the life in their 70s late 60s and 70s so it is a disease of old age like all other cancers what is important again what is the gap that we are seeing in this cancer look at this only 25% of the cancers oral cancers which includes part of adrenal cancers are diagnosed early enough most of these cancers are picked up in the late stage that is in locally advanced stage where lymph nodes are positive and all that and forget you know this is the problem this this population when when diagnosis happens in a locally advanced disease the outcomes are not as good as early disease not only the cancer related outcome we are talking about social outcome the up, outcome of appearance and all that so this is a big concern when it comes to treatment and this is a gap which we can easily cover because it's not a very difficult gap to cover now what is the indian breast cancer scenario you know in the in in our training periods and when uh, we were younger what was thought to us was that cervical cancer is the most common cancer in india but over the years the scenario has completely changed today breast cancer is the most common cancer and the cancer scenario also has changed you know see so ovarian cancer has also become uh, third most common from the sixth so there is a change in the pattern of cancers this is this is only about women uh, this is a change which has been seen initially in the urban women and now the same thing is being reflected in the rural women rural population as well so this is a constant change things keep changing so uh, you know this is not this is also never not permanent this is also going to change with the advancements in technology the mindset and all that but what is very concerning for us again a big care gap that exists in our society is even today about 60% of our breast cancers come in stage 3 and more in fact if we include stage 4 it is quite a lot you know in fact more 70% of our cancers are stage 3 and more it's quite bad it's only about 30% which reaches us in early stage this is a huge gap which needs to be covered and this is the scenario you know what is also peculiar in india which is not there in other parts of the world is we have a peak in the little in little late, late 30s and then again one more peak in the in uh, around 50 years of age means the majority of population get breast cancer around this time around 50s and some of them get little earlier we see this very very commonly in our practice we see a lot of patients in 30s 35 getting breast cancer and then another peak after 50 so this is the scenario 
But when you compare it to the worldwide population or Caucasian population or Western world, their peak is little later. They get around 60s. So Indians get breast cancer earlier than the Western counterparts. So that is a concern. We need to be aware of this and we need to address this issue as well. How do you bridge this gap? So, you know, this gap can only be bridged by overall awareness. So awareness is about two aspects of it. One is to reduce the risk, what is called as primary prevention. And the other side of it is what is called as secondary prevention, where we detect early enough so that the damage caused is less. So these are the two ways we can have an awareness, overall awareness of the situation. Now, how do we prevent? This is a simple nomogram or uh, uh, not a nomogram, sorry, a graph which can tell you how to reduce the risk of cancer. The most commonly known things are there in this. You know, healthy, you know, healthy weight, physical act activity, maybe 30 minutes of walking per day, uh, eat healthy diet, then comes what is not to be done. That is all the, you know, fast foods, processed food, junk food, the uh, sugary drinks have to be avoided, red meat, especially sausages and all that to be avoided, limit alcohol use, absolute say no to tobacco. That is very important. I have already told you earlier, do not use any supplements. They do not help in any way. So these are the things. And of course, you know, we all know that breastfeeding among uh, women reduces the risk of breast cancer and, and you know, a close follow-up in the long term after your diagnosed cancer is very important because if you don't follow up and you develop a cancer recurrence, you may miss an opportunity to get a cure. So these are the most important things which are preventive or prevention recommendation. It's from... Uh, you know, World Cancer Research Fund. It's a very good uh, comprehensive thing. Now, what is another thing which is important for breast and, and oral cancer is self-examination because these are two areas which are easily accessible. They're not like, you know, hidden areas of the body. They're easily accessible and a good sense of awareness can actually prevent most of the deaths in these two areas. Now, oral self-examination includes standing in front of the mirror and looking at all the areas of your mouth, A, B, C, D, E, F, six areas. If you look at them, if you know what is, uh, you know, any new thing which is there, any white patch, anything, any nodule, any ulcer, any patches, any lumps in the mouth, new, which you have not seen last month, you know, you yourself any self-examination, generally we say do it once in a month, not every day. So if you, uh, you have seen last month, first of a, a month, uh, next month when you see first, if you see any difference, any new thing, that needs to be evaluated. So that is the basic premise of doing self-examination. Now, see, these are the things which are looking for. Any patches like this, any lines like this, whitish, new change in color, any uh, uh, reddish patch, these are reddish patches, there are some nodules, there is a whitish patch over here, white patch on the tongue, there is a red patch. So these are the things which are looking at anything like this, any new uh, thing which is appearing needs to be reported and investigated. Now coming to, you know, see, uh, remember I told you already, oral pe people who consume tobacco and alcohol are, are at a higher risk of oral cancer. They need to do it strictly every month and see for any new changes. And now it's not only just them, it is for all others, but important that they see because their risk is much higher. Now, you know, our idea is to diagnose oral cancer when it is like this or before cancer, pre-cancerous. It's quite easy to diagnose, just an awareness is required. And we don't want to diagnose a cancer like this because the morbidity and outcomes are much worse. Now, coming to breast examination, uh, breast self-examination, again, uh, in Indian scenario, I feel it is very important, though there are many countries with many research which have said it is of less use, but, you know, we are not actively using mammography or any other form of screening techniques very extensively. 
so when it comes to it we need to continue with self examination so that the breast lumps which are missed otherwise should be picked up so this involves three steps inspection of the breast in front of mirror lying down position feeling for the breast and standing up position feeling for the breast so these are the three steps clear steps of breast self examination this is a short video which shows how to examine this is downloaded i i found it quite simple and interesting so i found that you know it's worth showing it how to do it stand in front of the mirror look for any changes any dimpling any this one fix a date if you are uh, if you are menopausal you can just look at any uh, fixed day otherwise uh, day of the month for 14 days from your menstrual or one one week from your menstrual period compare with the previous they are recommending taking a picture that's an optional thing but look at stand in front of the mirror look at yourself and see for any changes look for any dimpling look for any um, uh, redness any puckering of skin any bulges or lumps any rashes swelling in the, of breast overall swelling any discharge coming from nipple especially uh any blood in that any change in the position of nipple raise your arm look for any changes in the breast and do the same with your uh, hands down bending forward all those any changes and look look for look for any changes in lying down position with the palm of your hand you have to check with your uh, with the hand surface not the tip of the fingers so so that you know any new changes anything can be felt the motion has to be circular and all the areas of the breast need to be covered when performing this test and once that is done another way to examine yourself standing up is to look at yourself or feel the breast during uh, you know taking a bath or shower so by this any lump that is felt can be you know evaluated further with mammography or and clinical examination and then further investigation is possible what is mammography in fact mammography is an x ray form of assessment and usually you know breast the breast is compressed and x ray is taken in two two angles and usually a comp, additional ultrasound is required to assess for any changes any any uh Uh, any factors which have been noted during mammography so this is an x ray this is how you know any small defects in the breast are picked up by mammography and the major issue with mammography is the reach because it requires lot of uh, it's an x ray it requires to go to periphery uh, when evaluation has to be done it's a technology driven a manpower driven thing which Uh, has its own hassles and it's a very costly affair to really implement and do and requires a good assessment uh, by a radiologist you need a radiologist to pick up any uh, lesion so manpower intensive for that reason now other one which uh, you know niramai uh, has has utilized and used an ai to do is thermalytics in fact this is a promising uh, device wherein you know changes in the temperature of breast are assessed in order to determine if there is a possibility of a problem this is not diagnostic test but it can pick up a suspicious area easily and it can pick up those people who need further assessment it does not mean that the person who has been picked up by niramai has cancer it the niramai device is actually picking up those patients who need further evaluation so it's not a diagnostic tool it is a tool to find out who need further evaluation that is the purpose of screening screening does not mean that it is diagnostic so you know people should not get panicked if a report says that you know you need further assessment it only means that you know you have some things which require further assessment which require further testing it may be ultrasound it may be mammography it may be a biopsy so further assessment is required so you basically it forms as a filter before further evaluation of 
uh, a person. So that is the whole concept of this. What is recommended as of today? Uh, recommendations are that you know, 20 years and above, you need to do regular breast examination. And if any symptoms or any signs are noted, you have to go to a doctor. If you are 29 to 40, 39 years, breast examination plus doctor's clinical examination every three years. And if you are above 40 years of age, a breast self-examination plus doctor's examination plus regular mammography once or oh, sorry one once every two or three uh, sorry one year or two years is what is recommended in India at present. Uh, again, you know, coming to the advantage of uh, thermolytics over this mammogram is that you know it is non-radiation. There's no radiation, so it can be used easily. So there are uh, these are some of the ad advantages. And it does not require any contact. There is no uh, compression of breast. There is no pain involved. So these are the advantages. So, but it's a new uh, technology in the arena compared to mammography. Only time will tell how it will stand. So coming to yeah, you know my uh, you know if you want to read more about cancer prevention and all that, I just got finishing my second edition of my cancer prevention booklet which will be released uh, maybe in a in few days now so it is downloadable it's a free book which i uh, it's a second edition so coming to my last slide it is the uh, just to mention Am I audible? Oh, slightly breaking up now, sir. No, no, no. I'm using a dongle. That's why. Now it's where it should be. I saw that the internet is unstable. Yes. So my last slide about uh, you know cancer day. The I already spoke about this. We are talking about closing the can uh, care gap. The uh, what is important in this is the um, you know. These are a few points which I want to make. Cancer does not mean the end. It is just a chronic disease today. There are many things which are available. Cancer is curable in most of the patients. And in those where whom we cannot cure, the idea is to make it into a chronic disease. There are many things which are available today. You know, there is something called comprehensive genomic profiling. And there are many things which are available which try to make a cancer a chronic disease, even a stage four cancer. But most of the other diseases, uh, stage, up to stage three, our attempt is to cure the cancer. We are not looking at making it a chronic disease. A, a, a third of cancer can be prevented by lifestyle changes. I showed you the graph or the uh, uh, diagram for that. Cancer is a painless disease. I always point out this because people think cancer means pain. Painless lump is more important than a painful lump. Cancer can be treated successfully when detected early. Very important. This is the importance of screening. And there are many, many tools available today for cancer screening, which can detect it early and make you one of the people who is cured of cancer. Thank you very much. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, thank you very much for that wonderful, uh, uh, you know, uh, summary and uh, guidance on early detection, uh, Dr. Sandeep, sir. Uh, any questions from the audience, please, uh, uh, please put it on the chat. Uh, I mean, I have a burning question after I heard your <laughs> uh, detailed, uh, uh, you know, introduction uh, from Dr. Charita. What is this rabbit, sir? Please, can you explain uh, to our audience uh, in a like uh, easy way for us to understand? Meanwhile, please uh, share your questions. Uh, See, uh, you know, every uh, I believe, you know, every every surgeon or every cancer specialist is a researcher. So, and you have to constantly think how to make a can you know cancer care better. So, uh, so these are some of the surgical techniques which I have invented. One is rabbit, which is for thyroidectomy because thyroid diseases and thyroid cancers and thyroid nodules are very common, benign or malignant. So rabbit is a technique of doing it robotically. 
Initially, I started it as a scarless technique. There are other techniques also for uh, robotic thyroidectomy, which involves large wounds in the back of the neck or in the armpit. But this technique involves very, very small wounds, very tiny wounds with which we can do a full surgery in the neck and come out. And uh, initially, we st started it as a scarless surgery. But then over time, I realized uh, that, you know, it is very advantageous for the patients in the sense, you know, we have a lot of uh, magnification. Uh, we can save the uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve and the parathyroid glands and all much better. So the overall outcome is better than open surgery when it comes to uh, robotic surgery. So nowadays, I'm not offering it just for SCAR. SCAR is the least of my list in the list. I talk about the advantages of why it can be done. And most of the patients, when they come to me, they come for uh, robotic thyroid surgery. Yes. Uh, rabbit, they would have known when they come to me. So it's not that, but I have to explain why the advantage, what are the advantages. Other than that, you know, you uh, other thing which recently got me an international award was the Ria Mind technique for neck dissection for oral cancer, which is actually for oral and head and neck cancers especially, where we have to do lymph node dissection of the neck. Okay. So uh, generally it is done with a big wound in the neck like this. Uh, but when it when I started this, it, this again a technique which I developed over the years, uh, again same reason, to reduce the scar, but the advantage is the precision of robotics and the kind of uh, dissection which happens, the magnification and all that. So it, be, it has now become a standard of care in my setup that you know we most of the patients whenever they come we offer robotic for neck dissection whenever it's feasible Thank so you. these are and some the of the recurrence will be yeah. less sir? the recurrence will be less because of the precise uh... recurrence we don't know but what we see is the lymph node yield and all that is good and uh, we can uh, see the quality of work which we do is far better recovery is much faster these are the things See, uh, many things require uh, years of uh, looking at the data to really tell whether it is different or not. So sure. that's how it is. Perfect. There are a few questions from the audience. Uh, Charita, you want to take it quickly? Maybe we can take two questions from here. Okay, so there is one question from uh, Dr. Manjula. It says, is pollution... Uh, is pollution cause for cancer? Pollution does cause cancer. Uh, you know, uh, there are, see, for example, lung cancer, it's one of the factors, about 20% of lung cancers are caused by pollution. Thyroid cancer is because of, uh, you know, other pollutant that is radon. Radon can cause lung cancer also. So air pollutant it is. So, uh, environmental pollutions are known to cause uh, cancer, skin cancer in some extent. Uh, there are many other cancers which are, which may have, like for example, pollution, uh, pesticide pollution can cause, uh, you know, is not proven yet, but there are some, some evidence that, you know, there is some accumulation. Accumulation alone does not mean that it is a cause. Accumulation can happen. So, we don't know, but there may be some factors which are involved. But proven things are this lung cancer and uh, uh, the, you know, related to UV radiation and all those things that cancers are there, definitely. Okay. What uh, are the main reasons for non-tobacco related cancers? Does passive smoking is included in to tobacco related cancer? Yes, passive smoking is uh, is one of the factors in uh, in you know cancer causation. But remember one thing. Um, see, we are when we talk about cancer prevention, we are talking about uh, what is preventable. But one of the most important unavoidable cause of cancer is age age itself. So as you get older, your risk of cancer increases. Just like diabetes, BP, uh, heart disease. So your risk of getting these diseases, Alzheimer's disease, all these things increase as you get older. So the most important 
unavoidable risk factor for cancer is age. Okay, so that kept us apart. We are talking about avoidable risk factors. And whatever we have spoken about till now is about avoidable risk factors. Yes. One okay. more question. Can I take it, sir, please? Yeah. Uh, why there are two peaks in cancer? Relating to that, there is one more question. Uh, why is the breast cancer occurrence in the age 60 and above in Western population, but whereas it is 40 and 50s in Indian women? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't know. Actually, something which we need to study. In fact, there are many cancer patterns in India which are different from the Western world. And we don't know why it is so. Actually, something which we need to really work on and uh, do research on. Uh, because, you see, our cancer behavior is different from the Western population or any other population for that matter. So we need to see why. But as of now, we don't have a perfect answer for this. How often yeah. genomics helpful in screening? I think this is the last question. You have to yes, move. yes. So, genomics helpful in screening as of now. Uh, I don't know if the question is about uh, you know uh, screening by blood test genomics using you know blood test. Actually, there is there are a lot of there is a lot of research happening on um, liquid biopsy like tests means you know just take out some blood or some saliva and see the genetic changes in that and see whether any uh, any dnas are there circulating dnas in that which can be used for diagnosing cancer or early detection of cancer it's it's a worldwide research many uh, studies are going on and if that picks up, then, uh, you know, it, it may be possible to diagnose cancer or screen cancer and pick up cancers without, without doing any of these other tests. We just do a blood test and we pick up that there is something and then evaluate based on what results come. But we don't know when such results will come, uh, when do such tests will be approved because it takes a lot of time from the ideation to uh, results to implementation to uh, making it an available, uh, publicly available uh, uh, test, it, it, there is a lot of gap. Absolutely, sir. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can go on and on. This has been excellent, uh, Dr. Sandeep Naik, sir. Um, you know, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out. And I know you're very extremely busy, both at your clinic and the hospital. Mm -hmm. So really, really uh, huge uh, uh, you know, um, thanks from our side uh, for for educating us on this, and um, congratulations on the new inventions uh, that you yourself have made. And uh, look forward to working with you in different forms uh, as we move on and fight cancer uh, and, and support the extremely um, huge expertise that we have in India and research and clinical and tech and then bring them all together. Maybe a blood test for all cancers and imaging test for all cancers. I think there's a burning question from Uma. Okay, last question. We have the next speaker also available. Only one question, uh, Uma, please. Go ahead. You are on mute. Yeah, yeah, I, I am muted. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, from a great fighter and a th thriver, or what we call ourselves, we don't call survivors ourselves. Thank to God again. I mean, 24 years now finished, and I just came back from a CG bio hospital walkathon and all that. So it was lovely. So I just want to, at least among my friends, you know, doctor, in India, maybe it is because we always seem to get, even in late 70s and 80s, it makes me feel quite upsetting, you know, at that age, why do they get breast cancer? They would have probably finished uh, feeding uh, the kids because at that time, even my mother had eight kids. So it was one dozen, you know, cricket uh, team and football team were very famous. But still, all the <laughs> people are getting it. And they're at home, right? At that time, they don't go. So it's not an environmental cause. I don't know what it is. Uh, so as you just now explained, Maybe, I don't know, it is a food intake or the environmental issues. So that was one thing. And uh, second thing is, what is the gold standard now, doctor, for MAMO? Right. See, uh, for your first part of the question, the um, 
you know the age itself is the cause of cancer in most of the people so as you get older uh, you know the risk of cancer increases there's nothing unusual about getting cancers after you are older so that that is age itself like you know a old vehicle gets spoiled yeah, we are all vehicle anyway so it gets spoiled and that is a nature of uh, it's a nature's way so you can't help it so repairs do come now when it comes to you are asking me about gold standard gold standard as of now remains to be mammography as far as screening is concerned that has not changed because you know gold standard when we talk about it's always about what the textbooks talk about so it has to uh, be there so but i think you know what uh, geeta has done and all these things might pick up and over time may become gold standard see uh, what has happened over the last few years is ai is creeping into screening yeah. for uh, for let it be assessment of mammography itself even x rays and many other things even pathology testing because ai can assess multiple things and give us results so the possibility of using you know a time today i think we are in a situation wherein uh, we we cannot be dependent on one technology we should be having multiple technologies catering to the same need because a single question can be answered multiple ways and i think we should have the willingness to accept that there can be multiple answers for the same question so that is a problem in fact we need to look at that uh, actively when it comes to you know taking or selling telling that you know this is the gold standard and nothing else will accept so we need to accept multiple answers each way each test has its own way of answering it so so i think you know uh, thank you very much for having me i think i need to go also i have I have to do my opd so i'm little behind schedule okay yes. Thank, thank you. you thank you thank so you. much once again it's been Bye -bye. a real privilege to have you as a part of the speaking panel thank you so much